Hey guys, thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to be going over the week two concepts for Physics 111. So starting off with average acceleration, we see that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Therefore, anytime we're changing velocity, for instance, speeding up, slowing down, turning, or changing direction, we know that acceleration is also going to be involved. Below, we have four equations, which we're going to be using towards the end of the video as we go through some examples. And on the right, we can use this image in order to better understand the different degrees of acceleration. In the first image, with the yellow car, we see that the car has a constant velocity as it moves from left to right. And anytime our velocity is constant, we know that our acceleration is going to be equal to zero. In the image with the red car, we see that the car has an increasing velocity as it moves from left to right. So in this case, we know that our acceleration is also going to be facing in the same direction as the velocity. And in the last example, with the blue car, we see that the car has a decreasing velocity as it moves from left to right. Therefore, our acceleration must be facing in the opposite direction. All right, next we're going to be going through some examples in which we have changing signs for acceleration and velocity in order to see what happens in each situation. I always like to start by looking at velocity. And in the first column, we can see that our velocity is equal to zero. So in this case, we know that in each scenario, the object will start at rest. So in our first scenario, we see that acceleration is also zero. This means the object will stay at rest throughout the entire situation. In the next scenario, we see that our acceleration is negative. Therefore, the object starts at rest and will speed up in the backward direction. In the third scenario for this column, we see once again that the object is starting at rest, but since we now have a positive acceleration, our object will start at rest and speed up in the forward direction. In our third column, we have negative velocities. So in this case, we know that initially we're already moving in the backward direction. In the first scenario, we have no acceleration, so we know that the object is moving backwards with a constant speed. In the second situation, we see that we have both a negative acceleration and a negative velocity, so the object is speeding up in the backward direction. And in the third scenario for this column, we have a positive acceleration working against a negative velocity, so the object must be slowing down in the backward direction. And in our third column, we see that we have all positive velocities. So in these scenarios, we know that we initially are already moving in the forward direction. In the first scenario, we don't have any acceleration, so our object is moving in the forward direction with a constant speed. In the second scenario, we have a negative acceleration working against a positive velocity, so our object must be slowing down in the forward direction. And lastly, we have both a positive acceleration and a positive velocity, therefore our object is speeding up in the forward direction. All right, now we're just gonna be talking about a couple different scenarios in which we have constant acceleration. So when we do have constant acceleration, we can find the average velocity of a system by taking the initial velocity, adding it to the final velocity, and dividing by two. Below we have the kinematic equations, which we're gonna be going over a little more in depth later when we do an example. But basically we can use these, uh, these equations when we have constant acceleration in order to find different unknowns within the problem. And here in these three graphs, we see that in the first graph, we have plotted x versus t. And we know that the velocity is equal to change in position over change in time. Therefore, when we graph the slope of this graph, we get delta x over delta t. So therefore, we get velocity. In the next graph, we have velocity versus time. So now we know that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Therefore, here our slope is equal to acceleration. And in our last example, we see acceleration plotted with time, and we know that we have constant acceleration. Therefore, our slope is going to be equal to zero because acceleration is not changing over time. Now, to quickly talk about free fall, free fall is basically motion that's solely under the influence of gravity. And when we're close to the Earth's surface, we know that gravity is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared in the downward direction, so we often call this negative g. We're going to be going over an example 
with free fall uh, right after we do some examples using the kinematic equations. All right, now we're going to go through an example in which we can use some of the equations that we've seen throughout the video. Example says, a car going 4 meters per second accelerates at a rate of 1 meter per second squared. How far does the car travel in 4 seconds? How fast is it going after 4 seconds? And at what distance will it reach 12 meters per second? So I like to start off by writing what we know, and we know that our initial velocity is equal to 4 meters per second. We know that our acceleration is equal to 1 meter per second squared, and we know that our time is equal to 4 seconds. So the first question says, how far does the car travel in 4 seconds? And how far is a question of displacement or distance? So we're going to want to use this equation in order to solve for our displacement. Delta x is equal to our initial velocity times our time plus one half our acceleration times our time squared. And this is going to give us an answer of 24 meters. All right, next we're asked how fast is it going after four seconds? And how fast is a question of velocity? So we're going to want to use this equation. V equals our initial velocity plus our acceleration times our time. And we get an answer of 8 meters per second. All right, lastly, we're asked at what distance will it reach 12 meters per second? So here we're going to want to use this equation. And we're given our 12 meters per second as our velocity. So we're plugging in 12 meters per second squared minus our initial velocity squared equals 2 times our acceleration times our displacement. And when we solve for displacement, we get delta x equals 64 meters. All right, lastly, we're going to be going over a problem that has to do with free fall. So the example says, consider an object dropped from a tall building. How far will the object fall in five seconds? How fast is it going after five seconds? And if it lands seven seconds after being dropped, how tall is the building? So it's important to notice that the wording says dropped. And whenever we see that, we know that our initial velocity is going to be equal to zero meters per second because the object wasn't moving. It was at rest to begin with. And then we also know that when it's being dropped, the acceleration is going to be equal to the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So the first question is asking us, how far will the object fall in five seconds? So this is a question of displacement. So we're going to want to use this equation. So delta x is equal to our 0 meters per second times our 5 seconds plus 1 half our acceleration due to gravity times our 5 seconds squared. And this is going to give us an answer of negative 123 meters. So the object fell 123 meters. The next question says, how fast is it going after five seconds? So this is a question of velocity. So we're going to want to use our second equation. So we're going to plug in V equals our initial velocity. our acceleration due to gravity times our time, which is going to give us an answer of negative 49 meters per second. So the object is falling 49 meters per second downward. All right, the last question is asking, if it lands seven seconds after being dropped, how tall is the building? So once again, we're looking for a displacement because it's asking us how tall the building is, but it's also giving us a time. So we're going to want to use this equation again. So we'll plug in delta x is equal to our initial velocity times 
our time plus one half the acceleration due to gravity times our seven seconds squared. So therefore our displacement is going to be negative 240 meters. So we just calculated how far the object would fall, which means that our building must be 240 meters tall. Alright, thanks for watching. That's all for this video.